What is up, everybody? Welcome to a special unannounced live Reezy Resales broadcast. In today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to make money off of books that you thought were worthless. Basically, these are going to be rejects, your duds, basically these kind of books that you can see sitting right next to me. You, were, you might recognize some of these titles. Essentially, what I'm teaching you today is how if you have acquired books for cheap enough or you purchased bulk lots of books and you already have the books, these are ways that you can monetize them and make some money off them. A little bit of money, a lot of money. Some people I know this is their entire business model because they have access to books for very cheap. So before we get into the video, I just want to say that this video is sponsored by Neewer. They make amazing camera accessories and lights, just like this ring light that I'm using right now to make this video. I actually knocked mine over and broke it. It was my bad, but I contacted them and they just have amazing customer service and they ate, they supplied me with a brand new light, even though I broke it and I was way outside of customer warranty. They just hooked your boy up with a light. So shout out to Neewer for lighting up the set over here. But let me show you guys some of these books real quick. And, and let me know if you guys recognize any of these books in the chat, right? So here we go. We got Just a Kiss by Denise Hunter. We got White Teeth by Zadie Smith. This book was probably processed by or donated by the same person because it's from the same author, Zadie Smith, Swing Time, hardcover and um, paperback. So here's another one. Um, what is this? The Zookeeper's Wife was made into a major motion picture. These are all very popular books. So they have really good ranks, really good average ranks, really good e-score, really good sales count. These are the books that they sell at the bookstore, right? which if you pay attention, that's that's where I'm going to go with this. So let's see over here. These books are super popular. They're so popular that they're not worth anything on Amazon. The reason is, is because they're overprinted. And when people are done with them, they donate them, they get rid of them, which means we find a lot of them, which means the price is gone down on Amazon. What is this one? Uh, Magical thinking. A lot of these books, here's a little pro tip. If you come across very popular books with good ranks and they're in niches that you have interest in, you should probably read them because they're going to be good books. A History of God, The Lovely Bones, Lovely Bones, I always want to say Lonely Bones, Hardcover, Under the Tuscan Sun, The Splendid Thousand Suns, Zealot, um, Carl Hyacin, Razor Girl. Let's see, The Road to Character, David Brooks. This book actually goes in and out of profitability depending on the edition. Guns, Germs, and Steel. I have not read this. This probably, I should take my own advice and read this book. Um, A Thousand Splendid Sons. Okay, you guys get the idea. I don't want to go through all of these, but I'm going to scan some of them and show you guys my thinking about these. And I'll show you a couple ways you can monetize them. So, um, first off, shout out to RJ Martinez. Got that Marcella shirt looking real good. Marcella. Um, so guys, if you had a bookstore, these would be perfect to put in your bookstore and you could sell these if you owned a bookstore. You could also, aside from having a bookstore, you could do regular yard sales or flea markets. So if you live somewhere where you can do a yard sale, you could do a yard sale every weekend. And if you did it every weekend, if you're allowed to, people would keep coming back and coming back and you would gain regular clientele. You'd become known as the book guy and people would come and you'd be able to sell these books for at least two bucks, maybe four bucks. It just depends. This book, the retail price on this book is $19.95. So I would assume that the used bookstore is selling this for like nine bucks, something like that. So it shouldn't be too hard for you to command five bucks for a book in good condition that's in high demand like that. The other way that you can sell these is to your actual used bookstore. So people who have used bookstores, where do they get their used books? They don't go out and source them from thrift stores. Customers bring them in and they pay them cash or store credit for the books, right? So 
if you know what books your bookstore wants. And depending on what kind of bookstore, you got to bring them the books they want. There's generally only really two kinds of bookstores. There's like your average middle of the mall bookstore, which is the ones you want to really look for because they're going to buy all of these middle of the mall regular books like shout out to riff raff for coining that term but all of these books that just like the average american likes you need to have an average american bookstore you might also have a eclectic bookstore like a book and record store that sells books and they're not going to buy all these books they're going to buy more like weird esoteric more like off topic stuff more more non-fiction more knowledgeable stuff whereas the bookshop they just want all of the popular books that people actually buy which is great because since we have the data from Amazon, we know which books that they want, which ones are, um, are popular. So <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little winded right now, but before it used to be harder, we used to just go by rank and go like, okay, anything under a hundred thousand. But as you know, rank is not static. It changes all the time. So then we had average rank, which made it way better. And now we have e score. And if you use a seller tool, you have sales count. Now I don't know how many days the sales count is on a seller tool. I actually searched their website before this broadcast and couldn't find it. But um, on Scout IQ, e-score is for the last um, six months. So if you have an e-score of 180 on Scout IQ, that means that it's sold at least one copy a day every day for the last six months. Six times three, eight, two, yeah, 180. So you can use those to your advantage in knowing what books are worth money. So if you can get books for a quarter, 10 cents, 15 cents, buy the pound, buy the bag, bag sales, right? Like library bag sales are a good place to source these books. Then you can make a lot of money by taking these books to, imagine you're buying a bag of books for five bucks at a library sale. Imagine you got like 20 bags of books for five bucks and you take them to the bookstore and using these tactics, you get books that they actually want to buy. And then you you basically trading your $5 for $20, $40, etc. Another thing I like to do is instead of getting cash, sometimes I'll get store credit or a little bit of store credit. You usually get more if you choose store credit. And I'll use that store credit to buy the books that I'm missing from my sets that I'm trying to sell on Amazon. So if I don't have a lot of Harry Potter number six or a certain Junie B. Jones book or a certain Magic Treehouse book or whatever it is that you're missing, Nancy Nancy Drew book, Hardy Boys, whatever, you're missing a certain books to complete your sets, use your store credit to complete them. Now, the other way that you can sell them, which everyone can do, is to book buyback websites. So I'm going to actually screen share with you right now, and then I'm going to scan a lot of these books, maybe all of them, into the website. And the website that I use is called bookscouter.com. It actually aggregates all of the websites that buy back books so that you can do it from one website and see who wants to give you what for each book. And you can make your decision. It's really easy to sell books to buy back websites. You put them in the box. They pay for shipping. When they get the books, they grade them. They're like, okay, good enough. And then they issue you your payment via PayPal. It's a very, very simple the one downside to selling to book buyback websites is not so Powell Books is one of the big ones, um, a half price books, different stuff like that. But you might get two bucks for this site and one for this one and 50 cents for this one. And so you think, oh, I'm going to sell it to this website because they give me two bucks. But you have to send them at least 10 books at a time or at least $20 worth of books, whatever their their minimum threshold is. And since they don't buy a lot of books, you won't hit that threshold. So you're going to actually have to sell it to the uh, the one store that only wanted to give you 50 cents or whatever. The cool thing is, though, is if you can get hardbacks, since the used bookstores usually sell books based on what the brand new price is. And this book, let me see if I can find the price on here. Hold on. This is a $27 uh, brand new book. So. Generally, they sell books for like 50% or 25% of the retail price. And then they give you either anywhere, it just depends on your store, 50%, 25%, 30% of the price that they can sell it for. So you can use that to determine stuff. So if you can come up on some nice hardbacks that they actually want to buy, then you can make a good money on that. I think they buy way more paperbacks than they do hardbacks. But it's good to keep that in uh, in your site. So let's go over to screen share. 
and I'm going to pull it up, and we're going to scan some of these books. Let's see. I'll just do the entire the entire screen. Whoops. Sorry. Inception there. Okay, let me hit the chat real quick and make sure you guys can see. Can you guys see my screen? Am I going all Inception on you? You guys got the screen? Let me know real quick. Just let me know if you got the screen. You guys are good on the screen? I'm going to start. I'm going to assume you guys can see the screen. Let me put this number in here and start searching away. All right, so right here, I don't have a number pad on my laptop. This is not my workstation. This is where I broadcast YouTube videos from. So I don't have a number pad, which I definitely recommend you have a number pad or a barcode scanner hooked up to your computer. I totally blew it. I should have hooked up a USB barcode scanner to my computer, but I didn't. So I'm going to have to type these in using the number row. So bear with me, guys. 0375. 703861. So let's run this one through and see if they want this one. This is White Teeth by Zadie Smith. So right away you can see textbooks.com wants to give me $2.50 for this book. This is a book that if I were to sell this on FBA, I would make zero, no money at all. I think you could merchant fulfill this and make a couple bucks, but I don't use merchant fulfill. This is a website called bookscouter.com. They also have a, um, a an app that you can use on your phone to speed this up too. So I don't really recommend you sell all your books like this. You should get the most money you can for them. But if you need money really quickly, you could do it like this. Um, generally, you're usually going to get a lot less than a book's actually worth. But in this scenario that I'm teaching you, you're getting money that you wouldn't get at all normally, right? And um, it's it's just really nice. They actually sponsored one of my podcasts or, or a couple of my podcasts. So I did a little ad read for them. So they'll probably get a kick out of this. Let's try another one here. 9781594242. I really apologize for not having a barcode scanner feel like a kook right now super kook status this is by the same author zadie smith this was the hardcover so you can see chegg wants to give me 324 but that is not the same so look this is exactly what i said before chegg wants to give me 324 for this book but the website that wanted to give me 250 for the other book only wants to give me 46 cents for this book so i would like to put a note on this and say okay this one's going to chegg but in the end, if I don't have enough books to send them off to Chegg, I would have to send them to, to sellbackyourbook.com. And if they're only going to give me $0.46, cents, I would rather sell it to the local bookstore because I know they're going to give me at least a dollar, maybe two, maybe four. It's all dependent on what the actual retail, what price they're going to sell it on. you know. And usually they base it off the, uh, the retail price. One thing you can do that I really like to do is if you go into the bookstore – Go ask where the used books are and go look at them and just go see. Spend about 20 minutes in the used bookstore or in the used section of the bookstore and ask them what or, – or look at the books and see what books do they have in there. What books are they selling? And then you can just deposit that into your memory banks. You can look at the style of the books, look at the quality of the books, and just you can know what your buyer will be expecting. So this is Guns, Germs, and Steel, also worth zero um, on FBA. But you can get a dollar twenty-five if you sell it to Pals. Pals is going to be a website that buys a lot of books, in my opinion, or in my experience, they buy a lot. The next one I'm going to look up is The Road to Character by David Brooks. Nine seven eight zero eight one two nine nine two three five seven nine two three five seven. Whoops. This is why I should have a barcode scanner. Nine seven eight zero eight one two. Nine, nine, three, two, five, seven. Throw that in there. These are the books that people are going to not even try to pick up when you're you're scanning books. So that book, it's really not worth it for me. I'm only going to get twelve cents. I would much rather try to sell that to the used bookstore or have a yard sale and sell it myself for two bucks or something because I know these books are worth money. Like this is the solution for when. You know you can get books for really cheap, 
and you're just stressed out because you're like, this is a good book. Why is it not worth any money? It's not that it's not worth any money. It's just not worth any money in that scenario. You got to get it to the right scenario. So this is Razor Girl by Carl Hyacin, really popular author. Again, they're only giving me 12 cents for it. So let me go into, here's a couple books that are super blown out. This next book is going to be under the two Tuscan Sun. I don't know why I wanted to, is it Tucson? Tuscan. I don't know why I wanted to say Tucson. 07679 This is under the Tuscan Sun. Let's see. So Textbook Rush. That's another book that's like really, really popular. All these guys got enough copies of it. They want to give you 10 cents for it. I guarantee the local bookstore will give you at least 50 cents a dollar for it. Nine, seven, eight. If not, your neighbor will pick it up for a buck or two. Five, nine, four, four, eight, three, eight, five, one. So here, A Thousand Splendid Sons. Bet you didn't think you could get $1.90 for that book, right? That's probably actually pretty, pretty surprising, right? So $1.90 for a book that most people would, you know, not even sneeze at. But when you can get books by the bag, like at a library book sale, or you can get them, um, you know, by the pound, however, or you bought Gaylords and you have books, this is a great way to monetize them. Let me run a couple more, and then we'll we'll switch back and do a recap, and we'll finish this off real quick. So this one is called A History of God. I have no idea what this book is about, but I've, The 4,000-Year Quest of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. I've probably touched 1,000 copies of this book in my life. After a while, you're just like, hmm, maybe i got to read this one. And then you finally do, and you're like, Jesus, that was a good book. Why did I not read this before? So, 26 cents. Not really nothing too interesting. Here's one that I actually, when I see a book that's like super, it's popular. This one's called Magical Thinking True Stories by Augustine Burroughs. I've never seen this book before, but yet it has a really good rank and e-score. So, um, surprising. Five, nine, five, three. Let's see this one. Ten cents. We got to finish it off with one good one at least. Let's see. I got another copy of The Thousand Splendid Sons. I got two copies of that today. Knocking on Heaven's Door, The Path to a Better Way of Death. Sounds exciting. Um, let's run this one. This will be the last one I'm going to run through here. Sorry for boring you guys to death with this. Four, five, one, six, four, one, nine, eight, one. Super sorry for not having a barcode scanner. Next time I do anything like this, I promise I'll use my barcode scanner. So, uh, I do not want to end it on a 12 cent, 12 cent hullabaloo. That's just not right. Let's end it on one more. This one's going to be a banger. Nine seven eight zero three seven four five three zero oh, five zero oh, one. This is a sport and a pastime by James Salter. So twenty six cents. You're not really helping me out here, bro. What is this one? Do hard things by Alex and Brett Harris. Nine seven eight one. Four zero one two, whoops, six zero one four two one one two eight. Come on, big money, no whammy, fifteen cents. So the the thing is, is that the demand at your local bookstore is different from what these websites want to buy. A lot of these websites sell online, or they have physical stores in different places, or they store the used books and then they sell them to different bookstores for, um, you know, they, they're going to buy it from you for 15 cents, but they're going to sell it to other bookstores for a dollar. You know, they're going to have hundreds of copies of it. 
Um, or maybe they're they're buying it and they're holding it and selling it online later for different prices, like when the market goes up. 809-549. A lot of these really popular books all jump about you know one to four dollars during textbook season. Some of them are recommended reading for colleges and um, just the market jumps in general when people are on the platform buying books. So let me go back to the camera. Okay, guys. Hello. Nice to see you again. And let me show you how it looks when I scan these books. Unfortunately, my software for sharing my phone screen, I'm going to focus. My software for sharing my phone screen is not working currently, so um, the best I can do is hold my phone up to the screen, and hopefully that works for you guys. This is Scout IQ. This is the app that I use to scan books. I'm going to scan this book. I'm in live mode. And you can see this book is a reject, but look at the e-score. Not only is the rank 3,000, but this number up here, which indicates how many times it's sold in the last six months, 113 of the last 180 days it sold a copy, at least one copy. So it, it only tracks one sale a day, so it's only going to show 180 as the highest number. But you can look at that and go, okay, if the e-score, I wanted to get it to focus again. Hold on, guys. If the e-score is 113 or if it's over 100, then it's something I should consider buying in this scenario. And the more you do this, the more you'll begin to understand what books your bookstore wants. And everyone's bookstore is going to be different because everyone's community is different and people buy different books. So this is True Colors, a novel. The rank is 12,000 and the e-score is 120. So it's a reject. You can see the prices are pretty low. Let's get this to focus. Come on, camera gods, be with me. Let's go, camera gods. Yeah, so you can see. That used buy box on that is $7.41, which is basically going to lose you money. Uh, your profit will be $0.15, cents, so after shipping it, you would lose money. So let's scan this book. This is The Lord of the Rings. This is a heavy sucker, which is great about the local book flips and the book buyback sites is they pay shipping or it's local. There's no shipping, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, you can see this one. The rank on this, Lord of the Rings, obviously, 3,000 with an e-score of 117. So basically, I was just scanning. First, I was, I was grabbing trade paperbacks and trade hardbacks. This is a trade paperback. If you don't know, it's the most common printed book size. It's a trade hardback, common size of books. It's not a coffee table book. It's not a mass market paperback. It's a trade paperback and a trade hardback. And I can't really explain it, guys, but after selling books for so long, you just have an eye for what's worth money or what's desirable, especially if you can get your hands on it and you can touch it. You know what a good book feels like or what a potentially good book feels like. Anybody who's a bookseller will know what I mean. If you're not there yet, you'll figure it out eventually. Um, but yeah, you, you begin to learn what a valuable book is and you just grab them all up Whenever you have an opportunity, like at a book sale, bag them all up and then scan them and just take the ones that have good e-scores or good um, sales count if you're using FBA scan or just buy them all and figure how you're going to monetize them later. You know, are you going to have a yard sale, book buyback website, sell it to the local bookstore, donate some to the kids, uh, whatever. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, I'll hit those up real quick. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, um, I think I'll just finish that off. That's pretty much all I wanted to let you guys know is just, you know, there's other ways to make money off of books and not just the sell it on Amazon. And it doesn't mean it's trash just because you can't sell it on Amazon. You know, these books sold at one time, right? Someone wanted to buy it. They bought it. That's how it sold. So you can sell it again. You just need to find the person that has that same desire as the original purchaser and maybe even a little bit less of a desire since you're going to be able to sell it for 25% of the price. Like 
imagine if you had a used bookstore, if you could get a location. This book is $18 brand new. So if you put this in your bookstore, and a lot of used bookstores base their prices based off the new ones, you could sell this for $450. And that's 25% of retail. So your whole bookstore would be 75% off retail prices. And this would be $450. There you go. Um, Power User Tech says, what is your opinion on cookbooks? So generally cookbooks are not too profitable. It's not a category I would go after, but I would still scan them all and check them out, especially the niche cookbooks like vegan cookbooks, paleo diet cookbooks, any niche cookbooks, check them out. But I know generally people love cookbooks. So classic cookbooks like the Betty Crocker cookbooks, the red and white ones that sometimes don't even have a barcode. Those are worth money still on Amazon. People like to get the cookbooks that their parents had the same you know, they just like those same recipes or whatever. So they go on and on. But um, I know from my experience that I used to have a free book box in front of my house like 10 years ago. And I would take my super duper rejects and I would just put them in the box and it would say free. And I would put like 20 books a day in there and every day they would all get cleared out. And one of the book types that would get cleared out the fastest were the cookbooks. And I talked to my neighbors and my neighbors were really happy to get the cookbooks. They were like, oh, thanks for the cookbooks. And I even remember dude told me he was like, <coughs> he was like, yo, thanks for the cookbooks. My wife grabbed a couple of them and she'd be cooking up something nice lately. And I was like, yeah, that's what's up, homie. So cookbooks are desirable. It's just there's so many of them. Um, I just think the price has to be right. But it's I don't know. It's just a hard sell. They're not like the most in demand thing. I know people like them though. And the niche ones sell for good money. Um, let's see the app that we were using. It was a website. It's called book scouter. They also have an app on Android and iOS. Um, why haven't you gone bulk with books? It's a huge, um, it's a huge undertaking for me. I don't really have the space to do it right now. And, um, you got to have employees and overhead and, and yada, yada. It's just, you know, I don't know. It might be for you at this current point in my life. It's not really for me. I might do it in the future, but where I live, it's super expensive for warehouses. And I would have to have a warehouse maybe a half hour away or so. And I'm not really into commuting for work. It's just not really my style. So I don't know. I don't really have a good answer to that. But if, if you want to get into bulk books, get some Gaylords figure out a price, start processing them. It's a lot of work and you have to figure out what to do with all of the rejects. And I don't just mean stuff like this. I mean like moldy books, ripped up books, rat chewed up books, just like stuff that nobody wants. You have to figure out how to get rid of them. <clears throat> Let's see. Just curious, when you used FBA scan on your triggers, did you prefer to use lowest FBA offers just curious, trying to make much improvements as possible to my book sourcing techniques. So I always, always look by FBA offers. The problem is, is that you don't always get an FBA offer because the API only returns the lowest 20 offers. And if there's no FBA offers in the lowest 20, then you don't get to see an FBA offer, which means you can't use a trigger for that. So um, in that scenario... You could use um, Scout IQ actually has a solution for that. And what happens is they use the um, the tenth, the tenth lowest FBA offer. They manually grab the tenth lowest FBA offer and use that one. So that's a huge help. And you can set triggers by that. Let's see. What is how many people do you have working with you? Just you and a partner. So I have myself, my business partner, and we have one full-time and one part-time employee, and we operate in three locations. That is pretty much it, but I still go out and scout books, not so much regularly. I'm actually testing a couple new sources right now. I actually, I spend a lot of my time doing what I'm doing right now, helping you guys doing social media. Lately, I've been working on merch by Amazon and um, using those same designs on Etsy with the Printful platform. And also, we are looking into wholesale. We have a few products. We're trying to expand our wholesale categories. And we're also considering 
private label. Um, through doing what I do, the whole Reezy resells thing, I've earned the respect and met a lot of Amazon sellers that do a lot of different business models. So I can hit up Watch Me Amazon and get wholesale advice, or I can hit up Matt Loberstein and get private label advice. So for me, it's just time and focus. What do I have the time to do and how can I focus on what what I want to do? Like my wife goes to school full time. I, we homeschool. So I'm home with Luna five days a week and she has activities, dance, ballet, tap, jazz, gymnastics, art class, sewing class, like all these things. So my schedule is super duper busy trying to be super dad and Reezy resells. So I'm like up late night working on my merch by Amazon, which I'm trying to get outsourced, but it's just super busy. I advise you guys to focus on one or two things, outsource them, and then move on. It's hard to do it. Oh, shout out to Coach Dom. Check it out. I'm wearing the shirt that you mailed back to me, Coach. Appreciate you, bro. I actually left this shirt in Coach Dom Costa. He's in the chat in his car after the Merchella event, and he mailed it to me, and I just picked it up from my P.O. box today and figured I'd wear it for this broadcast. It's a really... Pretty cool design. Cool name for a merch Amazon merch conference. Um, thanks, Reezy, for the feedback. Thanks for tuning in, bro. What's the highest rank you would go? Okay, this question. I don't like this question because we have sales rank charts. So you should look at the sales rank chart. Rank is not static. So an item could go up really high and it could sell and it could be really low tomorrow. What you want to do is look at the sales history if I can get it for cheap enough and if I see a potential return and it's sold, you know, once in the last six months, twice in the last six months, it depends, you know, what the price is and what the return is. I might consider it, but everything's a variable. How much am I paying? How many times has it sold? How much money will it bring in? Like, is it worth the risk of having to pay a long term storage fees? The highest book that I've ever sold is a 12 million rank book. So, and that's super rare. I think the next highest rank book I ever sold was a 7 million rank book. Um, but generally, anytime the rank gets over a million, you should pay attention more. And anytime it gets over 3 million, you should really be considering what you're doing and looking at it. You know, if it's over 3 million, I probably want to get at least a $30 sale minimum. If it's, if it's, you know, go like 10 bucks per mil rank after that, 4 million, 40 bucks, 5 million, 50 bucks. So I've sold books that have no sales rank at all, meaning they've never sold, but I'm only going to list them if I think it's going to bring like 75 bucks. And then sometimes it sells. Sometimes you have to throw it away when the long-term storage fee comes around. It just depends on what your risk is that you're willing to take, what the potential reward is, and you have to weigh it all accordingly. So but I can tell you this, that when long-term storage fee comes around, the first thing I do is I sort all my inventory. I look at everything that's going to get charged, and I separate that out, which I just did a couple days ago because the long-term storage fee was just charged. Was it today or yesterday? Today. Today, long-term storage fees were charged. So if you didn't get it removed before midnight last night, you got charged. So I take everything, and I separate it out from what's going to be charged. Okay, then I take that chunk. And I look at it all and I look at what's, how much am I going to get charged? How much can it return potentially? Like what's the price? And what's the ranking? I'll sort it by the rank and I'll look. Anything that's over 3 million rank and it hasn't sold in six months is really suspect. And that's the first place that I start looking at to trim the fat and cut those things off. If it's over, if it's over 3 million rank, you know, and it hasn't sold in six to, it could be as much as 11 months and 20 days if you sent it in 10 days after the last like if you guys send stuff in right like if you wait wait like five or ten days and then start sending stuff in when the next six long six month storage fee comes around your stuff won't get charged because it will have only been in facilities for five months and 20 days then the the next six month storage fee will come and you'll get your first six month storage fee which will actually have been 11 months and 20 days so that's kind of like a little pro tip right there. But chances are your inventory has been sitting much longer than six months when the six month storage fee actually comes around. And if the rank is over three million and it hasn't sold in six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven months, you might want to let it go. So that's kind of advice. Take it with as you will for however you think. But there's no like 
there's no like number I can give you that's going to be like, don't buy books over this amount. It's, it's not a good answer. Dang, people are coming through with mad, mad comments. What is with all these? Burger Planet is going to mass report your channel. Let's see. Hide users. I am going to hide a bunch of users right now. Boom. Boom. What are you guys talking about? This is the weirdest thing ever. Nobody knows what Burger Planet is, so... That's kind of weird. You guys kind of just freaked me out right there. Anyways, you caught me on the late night when I don't have a lot of admins in here helping me out. But, uh... Jeez, the comments are coming so quick, I can't even... I can't even hide people. Anyways, guys. Have a good night. Um, stay away from internet trolls. And if you guys found value in this video, or you want to keep up with all of the other valuable videos and knowledge bombs that I drop that can help you quit your 9 to 5 job, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. It's a button down there over here somewhere over there, red button, subscribe. Click on that, subscribe, thumbs up the video, leave a comment down below, and I would appreciate you so much. Have a good one, guys. Peace. Oh, yeah, if you ain't flipping, you slipping. <laughs>